Almighty, the Holy One. He's never failing. He's our Redeemer. We introduce to you today, 21 for 21, that I may know Him. doing great today. Um, I'm so glad to be here with you and I'm here to share the word of the Lord with you. So come join me in the, in the word and the journey of the word of the Lord. If you miss Sunday service, I'm telling you, you have got to go back and watch that. It's such a powerful message that pastor preached and uh, tonight's Word of the Lord is just going to kind of go along with that, so I'm really excited to share it with you. The passage today comes from Exodus chapter 24, 15 through 18, and it says, Mos And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day he called unto Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on top of the mountain in the eyes of the children of Israel. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. Pray with me, Lord, thank you, God. Thank you for today. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you, Lord, that you are always there no matter what we're going through no matter what we're facing Lord that you are there you are in it Lord you are in us you're leading us you're guiding us I thank you Lord for the word of the Lord that's going to come forth today and touch my brothers and sisters it truly has touched me I pray we have eyes to see ears to hear and a mind of understanding Lord let's anoint this God for your glory in Jesus name amen so here we are talking about Moses, right? And he is in the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. And before we really dig deep into that situation, I want to rewind a little bit in the Bible and go back to Genesis, back to where Noah and the flood happened. And in Genesis chapter 9, here is Noah and his sons. And they just came out of 40 days and 40 nights dealing with the flood of the earth, right? A flood came and destroyed the earth. And Noah, he was telling people, this is going to happen. This storm is coming. That rain is going to come and a flood is going to come. And people thought he was crazy and they didn't listen to him. But his sons did. They listened. They obeyed. Maybe they thought he was crazy too. I don't know. Um, I know sometimes I listen to preachers and I'm thinking, mm, uh, really, is that really going to happen? I don't know. But I still, I believe in the Lord. I believe in his anointing. But I'm like, all right, well, I'll see. we'll see what happens. But, you know, here Noah, he obeyed the Lord. 
and he started building this massive ark. And um, his sons obeyed too. They, they joined him in this. And this is after all that took place. So the storm did come and they were in the boat for 40 days and 40 nights. And the whole earth was flooded and they're just coming out of the boat now. And I'd imagine at this point, they're, they're relieved. <laughs> it's like they've gone through this storm. It's finally over and now they're relieved. And they finally see that all that God had told Noah was true and it finally did come to pass. So all that preparation was not in vain. And it, it proved what the Lord was saying. So it built their trust in the Lord, you know, and it's finally over. And so I, 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 I kind of think that at this moment, Noah and his sons were probably thinking back about all of that just happened. And so I like to take times in my life and think back on what the Lord has done for me. And there are some testimonies I have. I would love to share with you all the details, but we would be here for like hours <laughs> of me telling you all the details of the story. So I'm just going to give you very small glimpses of these testimonies that God has done. But they came by a promise, by God telling me it was going to happen and it hadn't happened yet, right? So it was going to happen. I had to trust in the Lord that it was going to happen. So one of the first things that come to my mind is when I was trying to get into the government um, to get it, what my first job uh, in the government as a training and curriculum specialist. So I applied for this position and the Lord gave me a dream and he showed me that I was going to get this job. So I kind of felt a little crazy, and I, but I decided, you know what? I am going to test the Lord on this, and um, I'm going to tell my family. And when it happens, they will know that God truly did give me a dream, and His word is true. He is not a liar, and uh, they can join me in the testimony of me getting this job. So I tell my family, you know, after I applied for this job, I, I got a, I had a dream. The Lord gave me this dream that I got the job and I, I'm just going to tell you because I'm going to have faith in it. Right. And, um, a few weeks later it was announced that they had hired somebody else for the position. And I was really confused. So I prayed and God told me pray for the person that they get another job. And it's like, okay, Lord, I pray they get another job. Matter of fact, I pray they get a better paying job. And um, about a week or so goes by, and they announced, uh, you know, the other person that the person that we selected got another job and a better paying job. So they declined this position. I thought, oh, praise the Lord. And they said, so we selected somebody else, and they should be here in a couple of weeks. And I was like, what? I'm like. But God, you gave me this dream. And this is more like crying and upset. God, you gave me this dream. Like, are you, why would you do that to me? Why would you give me this dream and it not come to pass? I don't understand. But I just kept feeling him say, trust me and pray for this person to get another job. I was like, all right, Lord. I not only pray for them to get another job, I pray they get a, a better paying job. And the same situation happened again. And a few weeks later, um, I got pulled into the office and they told me, Hey, Whitney, you know, these other two ladies, they were really highly qualified and that's why we chose them first. Um, but this other lady, she did decline the position. And this is what the flight chief said. She said, it must be fate that you have this job. So we want to offer this job to you. And I said, no, it's the Lord. Um, so, so many things about that. The, the second promise that the Lord gave me was, um, he gave me a dream showing me that I was going to have a son. And this was during a time where I was having a very difficult time getting pregnant. So, um, there came a time in our marriage where we decided that, you know, we were going to let God have his will in our lives. And, um, let's just say that things did not work out very well for me. Um, I was having a lot of problems and issues 
and I would think that I was pregnant and I really wasn't and I had hormone issues, all sorts of stuff. And it was really awful. And God in the midst of that gave me a dream that I was going to have a son. And he said, you need to trust me. You need to just let go of the stress, not worry about what's going on with you. Trust me. And I, I had this dream that I had a son. And um, one day, finally, I did get pregnant out of the blue. And I knew that I was going to have a son. Um, I also had this other dream growing up uh, when I was a teenager, older teenager, young adult. Um, and this one hasn't come to pass yet. Um, I, I, was, I have this dream that I'm in like this stadium-like setting. And there's young families, young people that are filling this stadium and, and other ages too, but the majority of them are young people, young families, and they were all speaking in tongues and it was so powerful. And I looked to my left and I'm coming down the stage and the choir is dressed in white and they are singing and shouting and praising the Lord. And I always believed that this was a dream that was going to happen in Utah, but now I'm in California. And so you know, God has given me this dream and I believe it's from him. I believe it's a prophecy of what's to come and it is not happening the way that I plan or expect. And none of my dreams have happened the way I plan or expected, but you know what? It's coming. When I was a little girl, I prayed for a brother. I got a brother. Uh, that was my first prayer. I remember God answering, um, uh, you know, all, all sorts of things about praying for my husband. I have a whole testimony about that, you know, um, needing a job when I was a teenager, all these things. God gave me promises throughout my life, and they they came to pass. And when they finally did come to pass, I knew it was Him, and I gave Him the glory for it. And going back to Noah in Genesis 9, 14 through 16, it says, And it shall come to pass when I bring a cloud over the earth that the bow shall be seen in the cloud. And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall no more become a flood to destroy all flesh. And the bow shall be in the cloud. And I will look upon it that I may remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is upon the earth. So God now is setting a new covenant with Noah. And he places a bow in the cloud, all right? It's in the cloud to remind him and Noah and his sons and us today of this covenant, of his promise that he's not ever going to destroy the earth again with the flood. And we can look in the cloud and see that there's hope by seeing his rainbow. Amen. And uh, oftentimes, you know, in the storms of life that I go through, I have to look back Oh my God has done for me and and remember those things and remember I can trust him there's hope there I'm going through the storm I'm in a cloud I, I can't see I don't know what's going on maybe you're in the same situation right now where you're in a storm and you're not sure what's going on but you know God has brought you through in the past and he's gonna do it again and he has a promise for you each time you go through these things there's a promise there's blessing. There's something waiting for you in the cloud. You just have to endure it. You have to go through it. And it's going to be okay. So those promises God gave me, those promises that God had told Noah, things that he was going to do, you know, um, they had to wait for them. It was, it took time to get to that point. Um, it took time. We had to go through the, I had to go through storms to get to my blessing, you know, I, I, I had to go through when what, oh, they kept hiring other people, <laughs> you know, I, I, when am I ever going to get pregnant and have my son, you know, Noah, he had to endure and build this ark and people made fun of him and, and he didn't know when the storm was going to come, but he just, he continued on. And so you've got to continue on too. You can't give up because God is in the cloud. He's in the storm and I'm, you need to get into that cloud. You don't need to be afraid. You need to get into the cloud and endure the storm. Amen. So uh, I went through a lot, and so did Noah and his family. Um, I went through the storm, but there was promises that came through there. 
to Jesus. So when I think of a storm, right, I start thinking of the clouds. And the cloud is what's the sign of the storm, right? So sometimes clouds are dark. Sometimes they're twisting and moving and flowing. Sometimes they're getting really big and, and dark. And um, they create tornadoes. And tornadoes, they bring destruction, right? These, these storms that we go through in our lives, they sometimes bring destruction. And they, 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 things get taken away from us. And, and we wonder, like, why? And, but you know what? There's a reason why. There, there's always a reason for the storm. And we have all these emotions when we're going through storms of our lives, right? Or when we're going through a real storm, when it's raining and, and thundering and lightning outside. Sometimes it's exciting. Sometimes there's a lot of anxiety and worry and fear. But you know what? It's okay. Sometimes we got to go through those things. Uh, but God is in the cloud. Amen. So Moses and the people were preparing to meet. Now we're going to go back to what we, we started our, our, um, our, our message with in, in Exodus, how we read about Moses went into the cloud, right? So now we're going to fast forward to where we started. And we're going to talk about Moses. And, and Moses was trying to prepare the people to meet with the Lord, just like our pastor is right now, right? He has been working with us to take these weeks to pray, to fast, to separate ourselves from distractions like media. And Moses was doing the same for the people of the, of the Lord. He was saying, this is a time of prayer, of fasting, of washing, of sanctification. Even, you know, not be, um, wives and husbands not being together because they didn't, he didn't want anybody to be distracted by anything. He wanted them focused and, and uh, preparing themselves to meet with the Lord. This is a really important time. And so the people of the Lord were doing that. And on the third day, a storm came, right? There was clouds, dark clouds and thunder and lightning. And the people, they were afraid, but God came in a thick cloud. All right. So Moses, he became the voice of the Lord to the people because they were afraid. In Exodus uh, 19 and 9, and the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the Lord unto the people. So here's this thick cloud. And Moses spoke to the people from the cloud. And he spoke the word of the Lord, giving them the commandments from the Lord. And in Exodus 20, 18 through 21, it says, And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise. It was like a trumpet and the mountain was smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, speak thou to us. But, and we will hear, but we don't want the Lord to speak. Because we're going to die. We're too afraid. We, he, that's going to kill us. We're going to die. This is too crazy. So um, Moses said unto the people to not fear. He said, fear not. God has come to prove you and that his fear may be before your faces that you sin not. And the people stood far off and Moses, he did something else. He drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. He, he went in deeper into the clouds and, and, it, and in the thickness of this cloud, God continued to give Moses the commandments and and told him that there's blessings that are going to come and it was in the thickness of this cloud where this took place you know he was God invited Moses into the cloud so Moses went into the cloud and that's where he got his direction that's where he got guidance and you know what when you're going through a storm of life that's where you need to get in with the Lord you need to seek his face and he's going to give you guidance He's going to give you direction in the midst of your storm, in the midst of the cloud that is in your life. You know, he's going to give you commandments. Oh, man, when I was reading through this, I was so excited because there was all these things that God was giving him. And he was telling him, you know, the, even, oh, even the pattern of the tabernacle came out of this. You know, God invited him deeper and deeper in the cloud. And ultimately, he gave him these commandments and what the blessings were. But he also gave him the pattern of the tabernacle. And this was in 
the thickness of the cloud. And that is powerful. And and he he not just gave him the pattern of the top tabernacle, he said all the things that needed to be in the tabernacle and what they were to be made of and how big they were. He was ordering the steps. He was guiding him every step of the way. He said, these are the people you can go to for this and for that. And, and that's what God does for us. When we're in the midst of the storm, we're in the midst of this cloud in our life, and it's so thick, and when we're in it, and, and we start to seek God, God begins to tell us, these things are going to happen in your life. These things are for a reason and a purpose. He begins to give us his commandments. He begins to give purpose, speak purpose into our lives. Uh, he begins to order our footsteps and what decisions we need to make and how we need to make them in the midst of those stormy times. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you so thankful for that? That you're not just alone in the storm, that he's right there and he's going to work the storm out for your good. And matter of fact, it is for your good. There's a purpose and a reason for it. Hallelujah. And you know what? Towards the end of all of this in Exodus 31 and 18, and he gave Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. Wow. That's what's going to happen with you. That's what has, ha has happened in my life and what's going to continue to happen as I go through storms and I'm going through these clouds and thickness that we're going to have a testimony from it right? But pastor and sister size, they've been saying, God is doing great things. Things have been happening. Testimonies are being done. We just heard, you know, we're going to get back into service again with one another here in just a few weeks or one more week. And oh, sorry, my, my, uh, my computer uh, screen went off for a second, but Great things have been happening. Testimonies have been uh, come out of all these things that have been going on uh, the last few weeks in our church. You know, things have been happening. The stuff got stolen and sound wasn't working. People have passed away. You know, there's been loss, but God is restoring. He's renewing. He's regenerating. He's giving back. He's giving purpose. Oh, man, I'm so excited. Even a brother told me the other day, um, the son-in-law of Sister Delgado that just passed away, you know, he said uh, to me as we were talking about uh, what was going on at church a few weeks ago, uh, that through it all, you know, when he was praying for his mother-in-law, that God was speaking to him about things he wanted to do in his life. And see, that's what happens is we go through these storms and yet God speaks to us of things that he wants to do in our lives and our family's lives. Even though bleak things are happening, even though we may be losing a loved one, even though we may be losing our home or our job, maybe you've lost a, a child, you know, maybe you're going through a difficult time in your life, but guess what? God is speaking and saying, hey, there's more to this. There's a blessing through this. I've got you. I'm with you. Thank you, Jesus. And you're going to have a testimony at the end of all of this. And that's what God gave Moses, was the testimony. These tables of stone, stone were written with his finger. God is writing into your life story today. Thank you, Jesus. And now you have a choice, right? When these storms are going on, you can go and endure the storm, or you can fall away. Because when Moses become, came down from the mountain, he began to hear something going on, and it was the people. They had grown weary of waiting for Moses, so they began to build a golden calf and worship that, and they even got naked and were acting crazy and wild over this thing and worshiping it. And you know, you have a choice today. I have a choice today to decide, what am I going to do with this storm? Am I going to endure it, or am I going to allow this storm to cause me to be impatient resentful, angry, and draw away from God and into the things of the world. I remember past Sister Sai said the other day, you know, um, that sin will take you farther than you thought you would go or make you pay, a, pay more than you thought or I can't remember how it went. But, you know, that's what happens when we get into sin. 
It takes us further and deeper. I mean, when Moses came down, he couldn't believe his eyes. And he was angry and wondering, what is going on? But you and I have that choice today to decide, am I going to endure this? Am I going to wait for the promise of the Lord? Or am I not? And I encourage you today to wait for the promise. So you might be asking yourself, well, I have had a dream. I haven't had a dream like you, Whitney. Like, God hasn't given me that type of promise, but he has given you a promise. He's given the whole world a promise. In Luke chapter 24, it's, it says in 44 through 48, and he said unto them, Jesus said unto them, these are the words which, which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And 49 says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Tarry! You gotta wait for it. You gotta, you gotta seek it. You gotta get into some prayer. You gotta get into some fasting. You gotta get into the cloud. Get in, work through it. Tarry there in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And so that's what they did in Acts chapter two. They went, and when the day of Pentecost in two and one. It says, was, was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a cloud, uh, I'm sorry, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Oh, here's that storm again. Here there came a sound and there's this rushing mighty wind. So there's, it sounds like a storm. It sounds wild. It sounds crazy, right? And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And so Peter gets up and he, he starts explaining what's going on and to the people that are around hearing and seeing what's going on. And he begins to say, you know, this was prophesied in the old and, and expound the scriptures to them and let them know that they killed the Messiah. And they began pricked in their hearts. And he said in verse 36, Men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for this promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off. That's you and me. Even as the Lord our God shall call. Thank you, Jesus. You have a promise today. And that promise is the gospel. If you repent of your sins and are baptized in Jesus' name, it is God's promise to fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost so that now you are he's just not with you in the storm, but he's in you while you go through life. The ups and the downs, the storms of life, that he's, he's in you, not just with you now. He's in you in the midst of the clouds. Thank you, Jesus, that he's in us. Oh, hallelujah. I praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah that you are there, Lord Jesus. And he's there for you, and he wants to be in you so he can daily be leading and guiding you through what you're going through. So I invite you right now to just take some time and pray and get into that place with the Lord. Amen. You may be going through a storm. You may be in the thick of it. You can't see and you don't know what's going on, but Jesus is right there with you. And he doesn't want to just be with you, but he wants to be in you. So let's allow him to do that today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you're with that you're in that cloud and, and those clouds are those storms of life there are times where you can give us direction you can give us guidance where you can show us your blessings god and that there's testimony when we come through the storm and lord that you are not just with us through the storm but you are in us and we thank you for the holy ghost and fire that that is a promise 
that you have given to all of us, no matter who we are, no matter how rich or poor, black or white, young or old, that that is a promise for each one of us. Thank you, Jesus. Have your way. Have your way in my brothers and sisters. Fill them with the Holy Ghost and fire. Renew, regenerate, restore, oh God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the glory of the Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. God is so good. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Man, he loves you. He is there for you. He cares for you. He has a promise for you. And he is with you in the class. Go into the cloud. Endure through the cloud. Hallelujah. Tarry through that cloud. Because there is a promise for you on the other side. Thank you for joining me tonight. May you be blessed in the name of Jesus.